Hi, welcome to my initial impressions uh, review of the Condor Hudson Bay knife. I got this in a post yesterday from uh, one of my subscribers. Um, sold it to me for a very fair price, so the German survivalist. Come away from Germany, a very nice box, might I add. Um, it's a very large knife, probably too large for this camera angle, so let's take it down to the table and have a look. So this is the knife. It's a big chopper. It's got an eight and a half inch blade. It's got a clip point, which is effectively working as a drop point because there's no, th there's no real thinning out. It maintains a really thick stock all over the tip, but it's a, so it's a sudden drop or a clip point, whatever. Um, certainly no uh, strength lost on that tip by looks. Very very thick, very very thick tip. Um, it's got a hardwood handle, which is very well finished. It's not really specified what sort of wood it is. Uh, it's pinned on. I mean, the fit and finish isn't amazing. It's. I mean, you can see these. These are not particularly even. Um, it's fine though. It's like a big primal feeling tool, and I love the look and the aesthetic they've gone with it. It feels like something that Sully would have on his belt and bloody Doctor Quinn medicine woman or something. You know, real sort of um, hard use, hard fight, and you know, all purpose big old knife. Um, that blade's a really good surface for you know even draw applications. So um, the flat grinds with that um, that was sort of I've, I've I suspect it's kind of just a standard V bevel. I'm going to add a convex to it because it's a chopping roll. But um, yeah, it just feels like it's quite versatile for something so large. Um, the overall length is 13 inches. The weight is about 1.25 um, pounds. So it's, it's it's a heavy knife. It's um, yeah, got a lot, a lot behind it, and when you swing it, you do certainly feel it. Um, one thing I would have added would be a lanyard hole to this handle. This is a kind of knife, especially with a handle that is fairly smooth, um, that would probably benefit from having a wrist lanyard, but I'm not one to use axes to chop down trees and swing wildly around, uh, sorry, use big knives to chop down trees, so probably not for me, but to say for the end user, for the general user who is probably going to take it out and try and chop some limbs and stuff, a uh, lanyard hole would have been a good idea. Um, the spine's fairly sharp, but not sharp enough to throw huge amounts of sparks. Um, this finish here is like a factory done acid finish. It's It would be somewhat of a, so somewhat of a patina effect, so it should keep the rust away a little tiny bit. This will be a fairly rust um, rustable steel, this 1075. Very, very tough stuff though. Um, should have like, really strong like, lateral strength and you know, just with your chipping and things like that, it should be more of a bending steel rather than a chipping steel. The yeah, edges come really sharp from John. Um, happy with that. For a big knife, these big knives, I never want them like my, I never want them sort of pocket knife sharp. Like that's a super sharp knife. This just needs to have a workable edge on it. Something that you can you know, chop wood with and yeah, I shave wood with if you want, of course, but pretty happy with how it's arrived. I got this in a really good deal from John, so uh, thank you very much again for that. Um, let's get this out and, uh, and do a bit of testing on it because uh, I love how it looks. Um, I love how it's got this natural guard, just that butchery style knife, means your hand can't slip up onto the blade. Um, I think it's really well like class classically designed, which just should be a pretty, pretty versatile design even still. So let's go and see how it does. Let's chop, baton, and shave.
is not to you This is not to you This is not to you This is not to you But I've seen the way That the body's locked in bodies tend to break Life fell away I've been away too long And I don't know a better place But you And you know, you know, what you know is better, is brighter. This is where we were, when they showed you the dark. After some testing this afternoon, what do I think of the Condor Hudson Bay? Well, I did some chopping with it first. Um, it's a heavy knife, so it chops through anything small within one to two strokes. Um, it was fun to chop with it, except for when, after about five or six, my hand did start to slip off the handle. And I think I, uh, it does sharpen the footage that I, that I shot while I was doing it. So just a little bit frustrating that because I was having a really good time, but having to readjust your grip is a bit of a bother. But the big heavy blade and that nice sharp edge really does chop really, really easily through green, fresh wood, which is, in my opinion, what you're gonna use your knife for. If you are gonna chop, just to clear up, perhaps there at a campsite, there's a tree branch that's just coming down at a weird angle, poking you in the face every time you get out of your tent. Stuff like that, you'll get up, you just give it a swipe and knock it off. And this would do great for those sorts of things. Next thing I did was, was battening, and I drove this through um, one of those same pieces of log which I sawed off uh, fresh and uh, it was the same piece of wood that destroyed the Boca Vox rolled which was a little bit of a thinner knife than this um, it was down to um, probably the next level down I'd say maybe a few millimeters thinner and a shorter knife too but um, I just drove it straight through and I wasn't even concerned my batten was getting destroyed before the knife showed any signs of even bending so really really good went straight through a circular piece of wood as you saw Really, really good battening. Uh, a little bit of shock transference through the um, exposed tang, which is why I generally prefer uh, enclosed tang knives, just because they're a little bit easier on the hands when you do do work like that, which, let's all be honest, isn't exactly necessary work, but it's fun work. It's what we take our knives out and enjoy doing with them. So uh, a little bit of a shock transference for the battening, but very, very good at it. And the blade is perfectly thick. You don't need to go any thicker in a big knife than 3 sixteenths, I don't think. Um, because uh, even being a flat ground blade, it just wedged that wood apart really, really well. And then shaving was a really pleasant surprise after the work I did with it. It shaved wood just fine, as good as you'd expect. Not the most comfortable thing to use. Um, if I was shaving wood, I'd be using something like my Falcon Even F1, for example. Just a nice little, you know, all, all encompassing handle that my hand just fits perfectly. I don't need to adjust grips, anything like that. But if this is what I had, you could certainly shave. The edge is still nice and sharp down here. A um, little bit duller up this end, but that's what happens when you use, uh, use your knife for chopping and splitting wood. Um, overall, I think it's a really good knife. I think it's a good buy as well if you buy it in America. It's not a good buy in Australia. Uh, in Australia, the prices I can see online for these, um, either getting it shipped from America or buying it from an Australian retailer, about 120 bucks. That's not a good deal for, for this knife. For 130 
40 bucks, you can get a Becker BK7 or even a BK9 for 150 from AussieKnives.com. So if you're after the big chopper in Australia, unless you can get this at a good price on eBay or something for like second hand, then I'd probably hold off on it and get a 1095 Becker because those things are just proven. Um, but if you particularly like the look of this knife, there isn't that many that look like this, then it's probably a good buy still. Um, it's just a matter of knife versus knife. There's better knives or more well-regarded knives that are only a little bit more in Australia. However, in America, which is where lots of my viewers are from, uh, you guys can get this for about $50. Um, I think $44 on Knife Center at the moment. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, 49 on Knife Center. Um, that's, that must be pretty good um, for a really, really stout uh, all-in-one type tool. Yeah, I'd definitely pull the trigger. So overall, it's a good knife. It's a positive review. Um, probably a bit big for my liking. This is about, because I don't do that chopping and stuff, and I'm not really a big, big batonner, so this is as big as I really need. This is my um, Falcon Even A1, and it's a fair bit shorter, and it's just lighter and a bit more agile, and I just prefer the handle a bit more, but some people like the huge knife. Some people like to be able to do like that batoning I did, where you think, oh, I'm not going to chip off, I'm just going to go straight through the middle, and that's when this big old beastie comes in handy. So. It's my review. Um, I didn't cover the leather sheath. This comes with a leather sheath. I'll just roll some clips of me wearing it. Um, it's a good quality leather. It's just, it has no retention whatsoever. So this will fall upside down. If you hold the sheath upside down, which I'll show you doing, me doing now, it falls straight out. And if you keep your knife sharp, it could well crack someone's foot or something. It just, just something to be aware of. Um, but if you're just going to use this for perhaps going camping and stuff, it's probably not going to go on your belt anyway, it'll probably just go either on a camp table somewhere or in your tent or something like that, so um, just something to keep in mind with the sheath. It's not such a pricey knife, you'd probably ever really get your own custom sheath made, so a bit of a disappointment it didn't have a strap along the top or something, but that's all good. Um, for what you get, for a proper leather sheath um, and a nice big knife like this for 50 bucks in America, um, if it appeals to you, if you like this style, I'd say pull the trigger because everything about it is technically very good. Alright, I'll see you in the next video, dudes. That'll be me and my Condor Hudson Bay knife. See you later.